Hello everyone, welcome back to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College, which is part of the Sedona campus, and we'd like to thank our sponsor, Northern Arizona Healthcare. Uh, joining me now are two filmmakers from the film. The Lady Ellison. Lady Ellison, Jay and Greg, welcome for um, to be here. So I'm so happy to have you here. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your film. The Lady Edison is actually based on a true story. Uh, it's about the inventor Margaret Knight, and she invented a machine that puts bottoms on paper bags, something that we use every single day. But what's interesting about her life story is that she actually never had a formal education. She grew up poor, she grew up as a child laborer, and she, in her early 30s, invents this device with no formal training. But was a little still tinkering away when someone had seen her device at a workshop and then filed a patent for her. So my film is about the court case where she risked all of her life savings to get her patent back. And the reason it's called the Lady Edison is actually that's what she's named in history. Um, because she went on to patent 87 more inventions after the events in the film. Oh my goodness, so it's a true story. It's a true basically. story, yeah. Okay, so you were just telling me a little bit before um, we came on um, about that this is the first time the two of you have met, but you've worked together before. Right, I, um, I'm a composer and did a little bit of post-production uh, supervision on the film. And I had, I don't know, I don't know when I did this, but at some point I emailed your university mm -hmm. in Florida, right? Yes. And I got my name on a list somewhere of composers that students there might want to work with. And you called me up and uh, we worked on your thesis film first. Which played uh, here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> at the Sedona International Film Festival like a decade ago. Yeah, so. but I, I didn't make it out that year. And now, yeah. 10 years later, we're doing we're this. And we finally got to meet two days ago. Yeah. So uh, that is so awesome. Crazy, right? <laughs> we were zooming before that was popular. We were yeah. collaborating yeah. on the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you could do business these days, right? Yeah. Talking yeah. on a phone yeah. and yeah. be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> was there anything that in in your research and looking, um, you know, at her life, um, was there anything that came up? I mean, there seems like there's a lot of surprises, mm -hmm. but is there anything in particular that really surprised you about this? Um, when doing the research, because there's not, there's children's books about her and things like that, was when I found out that the lawyer told her to pursue this case, it would be a hundred dollars a day. Um, and I remember thinking, that is actually a lot of money. If someone said to me, you had to get back your patent for a hundred dollars a day in 2022, or when I made this 2020 excuse me, 2019, before the pandemic. Um, we made this in 2019. I would have thought that was a lot of money, so I'm thinking about 1870s terms. I'm like, wow, that is a game changer, that this person did put all their chips on the table, and they went for it anyway. Yeah, that's um, that's amazing to me. What are the other patents that she did? Um, she definitely had like patents that were for engines, or she had like a skirt shield, or things like that, um, but this is her most famous invention, and part of it is she is one of the first women to receive a U.S. patent. And another key thing um, I learned about her, ironically, after the film, because it's super interesting, is women could not keep their patents if they were married. Hmm. So it's a defining life choice that she never got married, she never had kids, because had she gotten married, she would never even be able to hold on to the royalties of her own invention. So we have come a long way in terms of respecting intellectual property for individuals, but especially for women. Yeah. So was that like really established of a protection of intellectual property, like after her experiences? She was know? actually super famous in her time. Like uh, she changed the game. Like she even got honored by Queen Victoria and she was very famous in her time, um, which is really impressive. Now, I think because it was so in the late 19th century, you know, 1870s that she made her stuff that she, the fame didn't carry over as much outside of certain circles. But um, in her day, she was the most famous woman inventor. Wow. How difficult was it to create this period film? Um, I was very blessed that I just feel like everything came together. I get a grant from Telson Nexus, which was an LA based nonprofit. 
I, I made the film in Georgia because I was living in Georgia at the time and people seemed to just feel like it was very important and it was beyond them. So I had wonderful people <clears throat> come on to the project who didn't take hardly any money, um, who or didn't take any money at all, who just wanted to support her and her history, but also we're just excited about another cool independent project to be shot locally in Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the kind of project that you want to, mm -hmm. uh, or at least I felt like I wanted to contribute to just because the message is so mm -hmm. relevant. I mean, it's a, it's a period piece, but I mean, at a time when, you know, we want to find role models for, 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 for different voices, women in STEM, mm -hmm. it seemed like the perfect film to, to be made now. So I was, you know, one of those people that wanted to sort of, in a way, donate. But although, you know, we you did, worked got, in the budget, but... He got yeah. more involved, which is really exciting, and that's why you actually just started as a composer, and then you evolved into a producer, which is a unique experience on this film. It was fun. It was interesting. Yeah. yeah I, it's interesting to take all, all that more... You have much more creative ownership, I guess, once you're sort of I, in that role where you're... So thank you for that. For, yeah. You know, bringing me on. You in guys the way. are cute. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it's... Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> but what inspired you? Like, as a composer, what kind of music, like did you think about for this particular film? Sure. I, you know, when we first talked, um, one of the things that we talked about was giving the film a sense of momentum. Uh, it's a courtroom drama, mm -hmm. essentially, so there's a lot of, um, not, a, not a lot of action, but there's still a lot of emotion that's sort of go going on underneath the surface, you know, in this very restrained setting in a courtroom, right? So mm -hmm. I really wanted the score to kind of bring all that um, tension and drive and, and, and sort of the sense of of danger in a way, mm -hmm. the, the risk that uh, Margaret's taking uh, to, to, to bring this patent mm -hmm. to light. I wanted that all to be reflected in the music. And so the music ended up being a lot, lot bolder maybe, mm -hmm. and a lot, maybe a lot more, um, like, I don't want to say louder, but it, mm -hmm. it, it had a sort of a, an edginess to it mm -hmm. um, that, we, uh, that we strove for. Mm -hmm. One of the ways we did that was, was with, was with um, using solo cello as the yes. main instrument, which gave it kind of a sense of time since the instrument itself is kind of old mm -hmm. but also the musician that I used Ro Rowan they're they're a very diverse uh, in terms of their own playing style a musician who can play in a lot of different styles has worked on a lot of different mm -hmm. projects and they brought a real cool sound to it mm -hmm. now we have a trailer of the film that yeah. I'm really anxious to see so um, let's take a look at that My first invention was when I was 12. As a child, I never cared for the things that girls usually do. Why would a factory worker have a claim to your device? She is poor and in need of money. Why else are we here? I'm here for justice, sir. This is my machine. I will be filing suit. And what if you don't win? Then I'll go back to working at the factory and paying rent as a boarder. You don't really believe her, do you? It's your word against his. You mean a woman's word against a man's. I don't know what kind of childish games we're trying to play here, but this is my machine. This is the first time it's ever been in Springfield. It was born in Springfield, sir. I find that very hard to believe, and so will everyone else. I would like to call Margaret Knight to the stand. You're a poor factory worker. No one's ever going to believe that you invented a machine as sophisticated as this. You may be surprised what people will understand. Margaret, I have no doubt you designed the machine. But Mr. Annan has already built it. There is no machine without the person who invented it. Hundreds of men can build a machine, perhaps even thousands. But without the design, and without the designer, there is no machine. Like just watching the trailer, like I think about like the time, right, in the 1800s, and you know basically how women were looked upon, right? They're mostly like having babies or housekeepers <laughs> or like what you know, like taking care of the families, right? And who would ever think that they would be into like designing or coming up with mm -hmm. with things um, such as this? Which is very unique character in history because um, one of the things that happened in her life that we mentioned in the film is when she was working in a factory at 12 um, she was working in a cotton mill and 
I don't know if you know anything about old cotton mills, but they have um, the way it looms together. There's a shuttlecock, and it kind of has to go through the thing. And it can be very dangerous. And she witnessed, as a young girl, um, one of the shuttlecocks hitting another worker and killing oh. that worker. And it and the, so her instinct after that was to, how do I solve the problem? So even as a young girl, she designed a mechanism that would prevent it from swinging around. And, and it was much safer. But the consequence of that um, did not lead to her having a better life. It led to so many other people being safe, but her life didn't change. Um, so it's, I think that's defined her whole life of she just wants to fix things for people. Like she made kites and stuff for her little brother. So um, she's a very unique person. And I, we don't think of it, uh, women doing that, but also Margaret Knight is not any woman. She's an extraordinary human being throughout all of American history. The scene where uh, mm-hmm. Margaret tells that story to the lawyer about the mm-hmm. shuttlecock is actually one of the places I sort of was able to get into her character mm-hmm. a little bit as a, as a composer because mm-hmm. it was so, it sort of brought in the entire um, journey really in terms of what she was trying to accomplish more broadly just in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, her mission was, it wasn't just about herself or her patent, but she, she wanted to make the world a better place. So that was a, I'm glad that scene's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. And where the film um, being shown, where is it being shown? Um, it's played in England. It's played in Atlanta, where we made it. It's um, playing here. Uh, we have gotten invitations to play it in Chicago and Europe, and it's played in my hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee. It's played in Tampa. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but Sedona's my favorite, so I'm not just saying that because you're interviewing me. <laughs> I, I, my previous film, Missile Crisis, one of my thesis film, um, I just remember having such positive memories of this festival. So coming back here was like, oh, this is the win. This is why you make a film, is to come back. It's so good to have you come back here, even though it was 10 years. (laughs) I know. I should have made more films just to hang out with the Red Rocks. I don't know. Well, you can come back. (laughs) (laughs) Film or not, you can come back next year. (laughs) Well, um, how can people find out about your film? Um, The film has a website and a Facebook page. The website is theladyedisonfilm.com. And the Facebook page is also the Lady S in Film. Awesome. And do you produce any kind of music that people can download or listen to? Yeah. Uh, well, I do. I work mostly in film. So I, if you have um, Spotify or Apple Music, I have an artist page there, just under my name, Greg Nicolette. And I'm also wrapping up the uh, the score to a, a Disney animated series called Tots. That if you have any young kids in your life, you can check out. Very different than this. Oh, awesome! But, uh, <laughs> I like to work on different kinds of projects. And, very cool. Yeah. Well, it's very nice having you both. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around the f- festival. Can't wait to hear more about your film and how it does. So, I wish you both the m- much success. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank yeah, you. it's so good to have you here. Thank you. And. Uh, Follow us on social media on hashtag Sedona Film Fest 2022. And we are wrapping up today's film festival here at Yavapai College. And I hope you will join us tomorrow morning. We'll be coming live again uh, with um, other filmmakers (laughs) and other films. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again tomorrow. I'm so impressed.